In this video, you will learn how to find factors and multiples of whole numbers. You will also be introduced to the terms prime and composite. What are factors? When you multiply two whole numbers together to get a product, the numbers that are being multiplied are called factors. A factor is a whole number that can be multiplied by another whole number to get a given number. When finding factors, it helps to know divisibility rules. There are tips and tricks to tell if a number is divisible by the following numbers, 2, 5, 10, 3, 6, 9, and 4. First, we will go over the divisibility rule for the number 2. If a number is divisible by 2, the last digit of the number is an even number, which would be 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Let's look at these two numbers, 27 and 94. 27 ends in the number 7. 7 is not even, so 27 is not divisible by 2. On the other hand, 94 ends in a 4, which is even, so 94 is divisible by 2. Now let's take a look at the rule for 5. If a number is divisible by 5, it will end in a 0 or a 5. Let's take a look at some examples to tell if they are divisible by 5. The first number, 215, ends in a 5, so it is divisible by 5. The next number ends in a 3, which is not a 0 or a 5, so 403 is not divisible by 5. Our last number ends in a 0, so it is divisible by 5, because if it is divisible by 5, it needs to end in a 0 or a 5. So 620 is divisible by 5. Now let's take a look at the rule for 10. If a number is divisible by 10, it must end in a zero. It's kind of like the rule for five, but for five, it has to end in a zero or a five, but for 10, it has to end in just a zero. So let's take a look at some examples. The first number is 605 and it ends in a five. So it is not divisible by 10 because it needs to end in a zero. Our next number 30 ends with a zero. So it is divisible by 10. And our last number, 8,560, ends in a zero, so it is divisible by 10. You can think of it when you're counting by tens, every 10 ends in a zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and so on. The next set of divisibility rules talk about checking the sum rather than the last digit. So this is a little bit more tricky, but it's still a great trick. So let's look at three first. If a number is divisible by 3, the sum of the digits is also divisible by 3. So let me show you what I mean. Our first example, we have the number 45. The sum of the digits would be 4 plus 5, which equals 9. You can divide 9 by 3. If you think about it, 3, 6, 9. 9 divides by 3 evenly. So 45 is divisible by 3. Let's try another one. 97 would be 9 plus 7, which is 16. If you count by threes, you will not hit 16 perfectly. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So this number, 97, is not divisible by 3. Let's try one more example with 3. The number 138 would be 1 plus 3 plus 8 which is equal to 12. And when you think about your threes, 3, 6, 9, 12, 12 is divisible by 3 perfectly. So 138 is divisible by 3. Now let's take a look at the rule for 6. 6 is a little tricky because it has to meet the requirements for 2 and 3. So that means that the number has to be even, and it also has to be divisible by 3, where you add up the digits and that number is divisible by 3. So let's look at a few examples to take a look at this rule. So the number 226 ends in a 6, which is even, so it does work for 2. But we have to make sure it also works for 3. So we have to add up the digits, 2 plus 2 plus 6. So 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus 6 is 10. 10 is not divisible by 3. So if you think 3, 6, 9, 12, so 3 doesn't work. So that means that 226 is not divisible by 6. 
So even though 226 worked for the two rule, it didn't work for the three rule. So that means that 226 cannot be divisible by six. Let's try another example. So now we have the number 405. And first we look for the two rule to make sure it ends in an even digit. And this ends in a five, which is not even. So 405 already is not divisible by two. So automatically it will not be divisible by six. And let's just look at the last one, 450. Now this ends in a zero, which is an even number. So it does work for two. We just have to make sure that it works for three. So we have four plus five, which is nine, and nine is divisible by three, three, six, nine, it fits perfectly. So 450 is divisible by six. Now let's take a look at the rule for nine. The rule for nine is just like the rule for three. You have to add up the digits and the sum should be divisible by nine. So let's take a look at our first example, 734. So seven plus three plus four equals 14. And if you think about your nines, nine, 18, 14 does not divide by nine evenly. So 734 is not divisible by nine. Let's take a look at the second example. We have two plus eight plus eight. So two plus eight plus eight is 18. And if you think about your nines, nine, 18, it's perfect. 18 is divisible by 9, so 288 is also divisible by 9. And let's take a look at one more example. We have 801, so that would be 8 plus 0 plus 1, which is 9. And 9 is definitely divisible by 9, so 801 is divisible by 9. The last divisibility rule has to do with the number 4. For the number 4, you have to look at the last two digits of the number. If the last two digits form a number that is divisible by four, then that number is divisible by four. Let's take a look at some examples to practice. The first number is 326. If we look at the last two numbers, that would be 26. And I wrote my fours on the side, and when you look at your four facts, you don't see 26. So 326 is not divisible by four. But if we take a look at the next example, 1024, the last two digits are 24, and 24 is a four fact. So 1024 is divisible by four. And the last number ends in 32, which is also a four fact. So 332 is divisible by four. Now that you know some divisibility rules, let's practice finding factors of a given number. So here we have the number 12. I always like to start with one because one is going to be a factor of every number. So one times 12 equals 12. Then I like to go in order, I like to go to two. Since 12 is an even number, two will work. And you think about your two facts, two times six equals 12. After two, I like to try three. Thinking about my three facts, three, six, nine, 12. Three times four is 12. Now that you have three and four next to each other, the next number I would try would be four. Since it's already here, we know that going in order, we have all the factors of 12. So the factors of 12 are one, two, three, four, six, and 12. Now let's try doing factors of 36. Remember, I always like to start with one, and this time it would be one times 36. Then we try 2, and since 36 is an even number, 2 will work. This time it's going to be 2 times 18. You can use long division, you can use a calculator, whatever strategy you want to figure out what it would be multiplied by to get 36. Then we move on to 3. The rule for 3 is that the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. So 6 plus 3 is 9, which is divisible by 3. So it will work, and if you know your facts, it's a basic fact. 3 times 12 is 36. Then we move on to four, also a basic fact. Four times nine is 36. Then we try five. Remember, it has to end in a zero or a five, and 36 does not, so five will not work. We'll move on to six, and it's a basic fact. Six times six is 36, and here we have our factors. The factors of 36 are one, two, three, four, six, nine, 12, 18, and 36.
Let's try one more example. Here we have 56 and we want to find all of the factors of 56. So we will start with one times 56. Then we move on to two. Since this is an even number, it ends in a six. Two will definitely work. You could do long division or use a calculator to figure out two times what equals 56. So we have two times 28. Then we try three. So three, the rule is the sum of the digits is divisible by three. So 56, we would do five plus six, which is 11. And if you count by threes, you won't hit 11. So we're not gonna work with three. We'll try four. So for four, the last two digits form a number divisible by four. You can throw 56 in your calculator and divide it by four. If it works evenly, it will be a factor. So we have four times 14, it does work. Next, we would try five, but 56 does not end in a zero or a five, so five will not work. Let's move on to six. For six, two and three would have had to work, but we have two, three did not work, so six will not work. So then we move to seven. There is no rule, but if you think about your seven facts, seven times eight is 56. Then we would move to eight, which we already have. So now we know that we have all of the factors of 56 in order. One, two, four, seven, eight, 14, 28, and 56 are all of the factors of 56. Thank you for watching my video. I hope it helped. Check out my Teaching Exchange Classroom for worksheets and centers. And don't forget to hit subscribe for more videos.